Hello, this is How Could It Bean, and today we are continuing with with SCP-7941. The contents of this story apparently happened five hours and twenty nine minutes after the end of of the last video. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get into this. This is going to be a long one. If I manage to fit on one. Okay, Doc. I haven't heard from you in a while, so I'm going to assume your shift is up for something. But since we're recording this, I'm going to try to lay out the easy situation insofar as I see it. 1. To prove I'm still putting in the effort. 2. To fill in some of the blank for you guys since you're only hearing what's going on rather than seeing it. And 3. Because I haven't been and more bewildered in my life and I need to put this shit into words to better understand. So here goes. I'm in a gigantic stone temple in the center of the sun. Ironically, it's dark as hell in here. The only light comes from these stained glass windows with purple lamps behind them. Usually, they they, they they depict scenes of life mongers doing magic bullshit with stars and light. The only ones that don't involve these life mongers are in the big central chamber. There's eight of them, and they're huge. I think these might be their gods, but they only pray to the big one at the top. I'm in the central chamber now, so I'll try to describe them. Bear in mind, there are no captures in any language I could understand. The big one, kind of a stork dragon hybrid with eight arms, each one holding a star. Next one going clockwise, there are seven headed ferrets holding what I can only assume Dr. Seuss would call a saxophone. A meditating centipede holding a scimitar. A hawk surrounded by fire holding a giant black hammer. A deer man holding a branch, and I'm pretty sure he's giving me bedroom eyes. A sea turtle with a shit ton of human hands holding a flute. A spider with a beard man's face holding a needle and thread. It's the only one that has humans in it. Looks like a bunch of kneeling knights. That last one's been shattered beyond recognition. They didn't even bother to pick up the pieces. It's the sound of shifting glass shards. But I think there are enough shards here to get... Better look. Let's see if I can put some of it back to get... You, yourself, insult. Ru, ruo equals unclean. Wait, what? Work poison soul. Ruo, unremember. Desist. Touch evermore. Shifting glass sounds end. My bad. Correct. Put some sleeping away. That's Zed Boku, by the way. The life mongers all got weird names like that. Narka, Narka, Zedboku, Vosalek. Pretty sure I've heard of Lulu Lu at some point. Now I gotta have myself. I should mention what these life mongers are in the first place. Here are the top 10 things to know. 1. I was never good at measurements, but they're each about the height of Big Bird on Sesame Street. <laughs> good uh, uh, and one. 2. They're dressed in these heavy v-necked robes covered in quilted bits of gold, velvet, jewels, chain, and furs, tiny paintings, I don't know. I saw this movie about the old red Hachazaris. It's kind of like the robes they wore. But only the older ones, like Ivan the Terrible. Isn't he also known as the Impeller? 3. They've got two arms instead of upright, but like 10 or 12 legs. No hands or feet, though. Just kind of fleshy little points. 4. Their skin is pale blue. Five. Their heads are gross. Like it's the shape of an Egyptian ibis, but covered in several films of veins and loose wet membranes, like spider webs. You can't really tell if their beaks are actual beaks or just curved meaty protrusions. They don't open the beaks when they speak either. There's a dark spot on the sides of their head. It's either heavily obscured eyes, self-inflicted bruises, or both. Six. The voices sound well, but I don't know if they have any if they have genders like we do. Seven. They're not from this universe. Eight. They claim to serve this god, ruler, supervisor, priest, 
local politician? Fuck if I know. But they call him... Kum of the Eighth Fold. Wow, I was right. With the Eightfold Jewel. First and eldest is Prince of Orbank or something. That's why we used to pick in a big window from earlier. Do you all all the worship of Kum? Nine. They're pacifist monks. And finally, ten. They're a bunch of boring old fucks with zero sense of humor. That's what this temple is. I'm still marking on the details. You've heard how these guys talk. It's hardly ever more than three words in a sentence, and you're lucky if it's the right word. Here's what I can understand of it so far. Apparently, our universe is, is inherently unable to create life, not even on the unicellular level. The only thing that can generate life as we know it is radiation from the mystical fire produced by Kuhn. Sometimes, Kuhn looks into other dimensions from his own, sees some space stuffs, and decides that maybe the dust should be a rock with a bunch of little guys on it. So, Kuhn and his... It's... <laughs> love the name already. Build a giant temple or ship called Sile. Sile means warmth, and L means fall. The infinite power source is a single skull taken from Kuma's body. Once the sorrow has flown to a nice area to make a solar system, the flames turn on, the whole ship emphasizes a single flaming aura that's, indi that's indistinguishable from an ordinary star. There is even a gravity well in everything. But on the inside, it's perfectly chilly and zero G. And it's not like I'm flying all over the place. The floor has this magnetic effect with both my feet and theirs. The reason I'll burn up in orbit is a little security system, as it were. Something called the Susor. Su means tribute and Sor means maiden. I never saw the Susor thingy, but apparently I it saw that I was lost and teleported me to safety. That's one thing I'm forgetting here. Oh right, this place is meant to be sapped by immortals. I'm not hungry, thirsty, sleepy, and I don't even need to go to the bathroom. I don't even cast a shadow. I forget to read sometimes. On one hand, it's good to know I'm safe. On the other, the fact that I'm probably going to be trapped here forever is only just starting to sink in. And honestly, it's scary. But on the other hand, maybe it's for the best. This could be eternal damnation. Just the closure I was looking for. Hopefully. Two hours and 35 minutes later. You're leading me through this hallway with a big mural. A relief. Which is it? Look, I didn't go to well, art school. A relief is a carving. A mural is painted. Ah, relief. Definitely relief. Made of gold or at least some gold-colored metal. Can you describe it? There's... For a full description, I'm going to need some more time, but I can give you a... If one's over, please do. There's this big life monger in the center, extending its eyes, arms over a bunch of a different creatures below. There's humans in one corner, but also some dragons, squids. Look, there's way too many to mention in one go. Fucking no, his arc is in, in here. What's the creature that sticks out the most? I'd say it's the one that the life monger is standing on. It's like this, uh, I don't know the word. You know those roly polies you'd find when messing around in the back, in your backyard as a kid? Pill bugs? There you go, pill bugs. But well, it's a big one. It's got these trees growing out of its back. Looks like it's in pain or... Furrows in the garden. Huh? It's pointing to the pill bug. Furrows in garden. Heretics. Adversaries eternally. Really? What what they do to you? Pirates them. Destroy creation's hours. Souls. Incubate, incubated upon death, crucible of pleasure, re life, generous unto decadence, life unequals good, life equals test, defiance, punish, require. 
Nerd. Ah, um, okay. Also, delicious them. Wait, what? Salad. Fucking weird ass. <laughs> More footsteps. Where are they taking you now? Looks like some kind of theater. There's a big crystal wall on the stage. Any other life mongers? Over a hundred. I hope I haven't been drafted into their annual talent show or some shit. Fellow servants, gather. Attend. Why aren't they speaking their language to each other? Apparently, there's a universal translation field here, but it doesn't always work with some of their words. My brothers, this thing equals Zakaya Ameratanya Kanto, hominid life form. Everish Nakurut, ambassador. Sao Voish Yante, SCP Foundation. Tara. Did you tell them? I didn't say anything. Look at the records if you doubt. Help me. Thank God. Kanto. Presence of you we gather. Origin as retained. Eyes of Soel Susor. Decoration upon unship. SCP Foundation. Correct? Ergo, Sarl Susor granted you passage. Sarl El Susor, I knew it. What now? You are distracted. Sorry, uh, just a little brain fart. What were we talking about? Ignoramus. Weird, I thought I had that not happening. That's fine. Gonna have to turn on airplane mode for a minute. Okay, that's beautiful. It's not listening. Told you I don't want to update. Anyway. Something in the background begins humming. Foundation emissary. Only logical conclusion. Dispel misunderstanding. Oh right, that misunderstanding. Doc, real quick, what misunderstanding? No response. Dr. Tanner is Kurt contacting OS05 Command for an emergency update regarding new activity from SCP-179. Sal Susor, summons order. Appear upon glass. Who boy. Cease. Averting eyes. Eyes, breach of protocol. But she's naked. Oh, 
The silly vultures who live in my brother are talking again. Curious. Maintain in silence, prisoner. Wait, I'm your prisoner? I thought you said I was. SCP-179 and laughs. See how you frighten him so, silly brutes. Kento, you equals emissary. So Elsasaur equals prisoner. Must we go over this again? I belong to no one. Disagree on similar subject misunderstanding. Kento sent. Heed his words. Doc, throw me a fucking bone here. It is all right, little friend. Your star about he was screaming. There were no, there were so many sad little corpses inside his gullet. I know you did not come on your own volition. Unwilling servants, lost travelers, regretful souls, humors, humans, former in my case, our kind understands one another. So what was the his, his understanding? Those in the Yi Foundation above you won my guidance all for themselves and none other. So they tried to hide me from their competitors. You guys are dicks, you know that? The problem. Is it dispelled? Time unequals expendable. But they have done worse to you, little friend, have they not? They put you and your little and your brethren into little boxes. They offered you as a human sacrifice. They flew you into my brother. They made you spy on these, these horrid little vultures with your mind. I mean, traitor. Supreme inconvenience. Exposure. Subterfuge. Secrecy. Broken. Explain. 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 Renek Tanaratna Yukaga Shreg. The other life mongers are silent, save for. How crude. Okay. Sal Elsasaur, real talk. Were you trying to snitch or. I have not spoken in with a kindred spirit in ages. My excitement clouded my focus. Forgive me. You know what? That's fair. Brothers. Discontinue fears. This problem easily rectified. Sao, Gathrak, Ursangnatet. What? Ursangnatet, quorum already have. Casting vote. No, wait, please listen. I can make them keep it a secret. Uh, what did he say? Trevor me. Affirmative. I won't let you do this to my home! Shattering glass. Annoying noise. Conquered. Rejoice. Continuing voice. Out. Lulu. Affirmative. With, with prejudice. Thirty-four minutes later, Zack tries to avoid hyperventilating. He isn't successful. Sorry about the radio silence. Are you still in that meeting? What did Sal Elsa Sor? They're gonna turn off the sun. Pardon? They are going to turn off the sun because of me. I don't follow. They found out about these little tell. Alephity bullshit you put in me. Then Narcos all secrecy breach? What rules will say? Oh, here is. If they know about us, kill them all inside over. Wow, we equals fucking assholes. So now, I got that little accident to worry about too. Slow down. Deep breaths. I can't understand you. What the fuck isn't there to understand? Sun go bye bye. No more sun. We all fall down and stop moving. Look, just. <sighs> Okay, I'll get at someone's attention, but I'm going to need a bit more than the sky is falling, the sky is falling, we must tell the king to declare an emergency of this magnitude. 
So if you discreetly get some more evidence... No, don't bother. What now? I'll take care of this. Judgment pass. So, sanctum of peace. U equals forgiven. So, sense of a physical struggle. Pain. Request. Discontinue. Bruises. Stop it, Kent. What's the matter? Go about this carefully. Sorry, I read that wrong. Holy crap. Stop it, Kent. We need to go about this carefully. What's the matter? Fight back already! Already told you. Life mongers equals pacifists. No fighting. He said on his way to commit literal fucking genocide. You misunderstand. We not fight. We not conquer. We create. What we create, ours by right. All under soil, our property. Victory without struggle. Uggle. This unequals war. This unequals fight. This equals housework. So you don't give a shit at billions of humans and fuck all how many other creatures are going to die? Observe. Record. Acknowledge. Obs uh, obfuscate. Parameters met. Safety equals cosmetic. More struggling. Tanner, stop antagonizing him. That's an order! A cord anatomical repositioning. <sighs> Very interesting. Zack Pants moving quickly down a cramped hallway. Kent, listen. Shut up. I got this. Just say so and wait for instructions. Don't make it worse. Shut the fuck up before I think really hard about stuff you don't want to see and inject it into your brain. That's not how this works. Nice fluff. Take this. Take what? Can't you see it? You know I'm using a phone to talk to you, right? Zack continues his pace. Zack speeds up his pace, yelling with rage. Glass crashes. The following shards echo. He's in a massive room. Whoa. A thin, wheedling, childlike voice cries out in the distance. Do you like my scale? Do you like my scale, mister? There's a tiny, naked lifemonger here. He's bound to a giant dragon scale with huge golden chains sticking out from his back. You look interesting. Are you stuff from the same species as my sister? We're not related or anything. Who are you? I am Ur. I am Siles Catalyst. I pull Okum's flame from the scale and tell it where to go. How do you do that? <laughs> I don't know. I see what my masters tell me to. Are you my master? No one comes in my chambers unless they give commands, and I would never turn down a command, no matter what. Rapidly approaching footsteps from the hallway outside. Kent, don't even think about it. Yes, I am your master. Kent? What is your command? Kent! Sorry, Doc. I found my way to clear my car. Oh, my. I order you to make me the new cat, Ellis. No! Done! That's funny. I don't feel anything. Sounds of metal sinking into flesh followed by chains. Zack screams incoherently. <clears throat>
From this point on, Zach will be referred to as SCP-794-B1A. Unexpected. Where is Ur? Unknown. Falakna, transcendent inconvenience. Not necessarily. Parameters still attainable. Still under jurisdiction. Sitvoku, give. Honored. Approaching footsteps. Catalyst, here primary. Get off my bus! Sounds of intense rushing flames. Said Voku flames. Rude. Extreme aggra aggravation. Immaturity. Rushing displacement of... of air. My present bondage. Unmake this immediately. More rushing flames. Between 40 to 60 light mongers are heard streaking. Repeat command. My present and bondage. Unmake this immediately. Wham. 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 Cracking bombs. Ignoramus. Wham. Die! Regrettably impossible. All immortal here, remember? Fun fact! If your store doesn't have eternal damnation in stock, you can make your own using these simple, everyday materials. Nothing to click on, it's just different and lady. It just has different colors. That's pretty neat, though. Intense, overpowering flames drown out other sounds for approximately 15 minutes. The new sunlight reaches Earth. Inconsequential. Shut the fuck up! Sass of us, irrelevant. Sass of populace, irrelevant. Only record, only observe, only acknowledge. I will never let you take the sun away. Acknowledge. Question. 18 minutes. Have they passed? Bitch, do I look like I give a fuck what time it is? Time, 8 minutes. Light reaches Earth. Look, see your world. Proper catalyst behavior. Certain mindset required. Inexperienced. Human term? Runaway train. What is that? What is that? What is that? What is happening? You tell me. I can't control anymore. How can I make it stop? Sial is poisoned. Your ignorance, your hatred, your weakness. Tell me how to make it stop. You can stop. Reversible. There is way. Can tell you. Just tell me. My brothers, our emergency subspace shunt. Life mongers begin fading, fading away. Where the hell are you going? You will never be a good person. They disappear. No! No! I can't make it stop! I... Doc! Doc! Pick up the fucking phone! Please! There's been no further er, SCP-2922 contact from SCP-7941A. Ooh, another offset. This is kind of long. <sighs> Partial schematic of the Long Conra. Project, Mr. Bellamy, first entry. Log date, February 2nd, 2598. Groundhogs are extinct. Six more weeks of bullshit. This is Dr. Sylvia Tanner. I was voluntarily buried alive in Harwick 550 years ago. I got used to it more quickly than I expected. Certainly helps that the, the coffin was reinforced, fitted with reserving machinery, and most of the flora and fauna that would come, that could come in here help with the ecosystem. Uh, 
and help with decomposition haven't turned into slime with the rest. Thing is, I need a way to stay alive for a long time, and I found a way to do so using the parameters of SCP-6502. Fortify the parameter of, of SCP-6502 with automated security systems. Have my staff bury me alive in Harwick. Wake up in extreme agony. Spend a few decades reminding myself of the plan and getting the weepy bits out of my system. Get over it and keep going. Communicate with my staff to finish the design for the long Conrad. While still maintaining a six foot radius of dirt around my coffin in all directions, have my body excavated and fit into in the chassis of the long Conrad. Congratulations! You are now powering a high power tank designed to clear out the slime while keeping its occupants immortal to so end surrounded with grave dirt. Thus began my fi personal 5 century war against what was left of multicellular life on my planet. Now here's the tricky bit. I'm in the center of a 50 kilometer radius that's completely free of the jello from hell. My weapon system Evans have all decayed over time and are now useless, and everyone who could fix them has either, either left Earth or died. Only my movement system seems to work anymore, because it's solar powered. <laughs> if I had to say what fucks me up the most about Daybreak to this day is that while it started, I was on the phone with its instigator. Half the time I was in that, that super casket, I was thinking about how, all the ways I could have stopped him, what I could have said. All useless conjecture, hindsight being 2020. I think I'm starting to understand Ken's mindset, thanks to what I couldn't stop. I've got a school bus in a lake of my very own, though I can't hold a candle to what he must have been feeling over ever since it started up, if he's even aware. So here's the new plan, what I'll call Operation Mr. Bellamy. Drag this tank 20 clicks or, or at least to what's left of Site 59. Find a teleportation based on you from 2024. I'll remember the name when I see it. Hey, that's next year. Teleport this stupid tank onto this scale chamber in Sarl. Hold the mother of all mental health and bridges with the man in the sun. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. But something tells me the best case scenario still involves my death. Joke's on you, Kent. I'm done anyway. If you're hearing this, I, then I, either I have won or the slime have evolved to a point where they can understand human speech. If it's the latter, you know what? Good for you. Maybe you can figure out how to keep this world sane better than your forefathers could. Project Mr. Bellamy, second entry. Log date, February 3rd, 2598. Teleporter worked like a charm, broke upon use, but in theory, I only needed to use it once. I got the coordinates wrong. I'm on Mars. Project Mr. Bellamy, 285th entry. Log date, March 17th, 2793. Yes! Yes! Fucking yes! Finally, I have gathered enough solar energy into the thrusters to break Mars' is gravitational pull. I'm out of energy, but fuck it, I'm still okay. Get it together, I'm in orbit, I can just stay here, charge the solar thing some more, and drift. Gradually, toward the sun. 'Toward the sun. I said toward, not away, and not fucking back. Back to Mars, god damn it, god damn it, god damn it, god damn it. Project Mr. Bellamy, 783rd entry. <laughs> Finally approaching the sun. Past Mercury's orbit last month. <laughs> I have been alive way too long. What was I doing again? Sun, right. Tell the guy in the sun to stop being stupid. Getting hotter, lots of warning ings, buzzers. Buzz. I'll take the rapist for 200, Mrs. Trebek. This is where it ends, everyone. I'm going to be a thin layer of, layer of barbecue sauce orbiting the sun for eternity. If by chance some aliens or something find us recording in the drifting debris, please know that I'm truly sorry for how off-color I was getting in Log 503. I was 
really going through with some crap during my second crash landing on Earth, and bang. Was that a heart attack? That was probably a heart attack. Can't tell anymore. Save him. Checking radar. Well, as if I didn't have enough confirmation and that this is where I'll die. An undulating blob of SV-001 slime has gathered around this, this ship. Still lucid. Of course you are. Hurry up and kill me. I am alone. Melded with nobody. None may control me. Body changes. Duty remains. Save him. Kent needs you. Oh my god, do you actually have your life more figured out than I do? Save him. Bitch, how? The slime envelops the tank completely in a thick layer. The light will not burn its children. The ship plunges into the depths of the sun. Project Mr. Bellamy, 784th entry. A dimly lit circular chamber with a dome ceiling. The floor is, is 600 meters in diameter. A mural of Prince Coombe can be seen on the ceiling. On one side of the room is Dr. Tan and his charred and heavily dented tank. There is, there is a, a broken length of iridescent er, 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 flesh propped up against the wall. A dim light lingers within. The naked and heavily charred body of SCP-7941-A lays across the scale. The chains that bound him have in place have broken, likely a result of his initial rampage. He is still the catalyst of SCP-001, Sael. He stares at the ceiling. For ten minutes, neither he nor Tyner say anything. It's been a while. SCP-7941 and it grumbles. His voice is a heavily distorted am am algum of the angriest noises ever to exist. So, how are you holding up? His mouth opens, a stream of blinding, white-hot flame jets forth, melting off the wheels of the tank, its spherical form, its spherical form rolls helplessly. Red. Just red. At this point, I have literally nothing better to do. I checked the calendar. I have dedicated 1,403 years of my existence to travel here and preparing for this meeting. I have forgotten how to do everything else. To be honest, I think I even forgot why I'm doing it. Just hear me out. Then I promise you can do what you want with me. Of course there is a point, you stubborn idiot. The survival of the human race depends on your ability to get the fuck over yourself. We all make mistakes, don't we? Yeah, they aren't hiding any text in here unless I'm missing something. It was a fucking mistake! Learn from it and move on! Of course I wouldn't tell Hitler or that. Jesus, why does he, he always come up as a shitty little caveat in this kind of conversation? It's one thing you meant to change the color of the sun and turn us all into sentient Tabasco, but you didn't. You didn't mean to do it, just like you didn't mean to drown those kids in the 
The balloon fire er, it tears a hole through the center of the tank. Tatter cries out in pain. Come on, you're immortal in here, aren't you? You have all the time in the world to set things right. If you don't know how right this minute, you can learn. Then try. You are not a good man or a bad man. At the end of, of the day, none of those things exist. They're only actions and consequences. You are a man. Blinding white fire engulfs the room. When the flames clear, all that remains is a pile of molten metal and vitrified dirt encasing the coffin like a crystal. A small hole pokes out over Tanner's decomposed face, which slowly regenerates from the immortality effect of the ship. She coughs and struggles to speak. <coughs> right, the immortality field. Just so you know, that blew up my eardrums, so you've officially won the argument. What? Anyway, since your mind's made up, is there there's another reason I came here? I want to tell you a joke. <clears throat> there is a cranky old man called, named Mr. Bellamy. Hates the law and the government to the point of obsession. Boards his windows, keeps 50 guns, has a bunch of we don't call police signs, currently owes $853,000 in debt to the Bank of America. He never intends to pay. He thinks he can lawsuit it all out of the way when he needs to. He just got finished painting his house with lead paint all over it. Sorry, motherfucker, he heard that lead paint was made illegal, but no. No self-important G-Man is going to take away his right to poison himself. So he sits in his den and sniffs with some sweet, sweet fumes. Suddenly, he gets a weird, shrieky notification on his phone. Something about ballistic missiles and shrieking shelter immediately. In a matter of minutes, the whole rest of the world is covered in a nuclear fire that leaves the rest of the world uninhabitable. But god damn it, Mr. Bellamy's lead paint was tough stuff. The toxic fumes pass over, pass him over like like there was Lamb's blood over his door. At the same time, asteroid number ABC one two three or whatever slams into Antarctica, dousing the flames, but also putting the whole world underwater, wiping out what whoever survived the nuclear war. But guess what? The paint was also a waterproof, keeping Mr. Bellamy safe until his air runs out. Just kidding. His army is so high that it peaks over the waterline. He's also packed up enough canned beans and water in his basement to last him 70 years. <clears throat> so with, with all that in mind, given a 10% compound interest rate, how much will he owe the bank in 10 years? <laughs> there. See, you. He blasts Tanner's face with the troll port of SCP 001's light. Her flesh begins to liquefy. That's right. Just get out of your system. She melts. One try, but that's all. Ballad of the Houndsman and MV3. At least some of you aren't gonna autoplay something. The third offset. Oh, it's a poem. Kind of a song. Alright, this is the last little bit of this, I'm quite sure. Right? Yep, it is. Okay. The sleeping pilot of the solar pyre. 
who was once again immured within his mind. An age of dusty silence had begun, above the slaughterhouse he left behind. The helmsman wished to answer for his crimes, no honest judge would grant him clemency. A court was held within his looking glass, for judge and jury were all absentee. The cruelest judge within an endemmed cap of black, and bit his upper lip to temper hate, but since the hangman and had all gone extinct. I sentence you, destroyer, to create. O oh, helmsmen, O oh, helmsmen, of the age untold, the one to turn our crimson sun to gold. There's one opponent left within your queue, now subjugate your cruel oppressor, you. The helmsman mind was incompatible with any answer that would see him live. Where was the justice in this strange reward? But yet he had not to lose, and all to give. Alas, destruction was his only skill, and all the teachers save himself retired. But growing desperation was the thing that made primeval a man discover fire. Time is the enemy of tyrant gods, for when it's unconstrained, all dreams come true. The boulders on the hilltop, motionless, for Sisyphus had learned a thing or two. O oh, helmsman, helmsman, of the age untold, the one who turned our crimson sun to gold. Then let the astral furnace twist and churn, and ruin everything until you learn. For eons did the flames escape themselves among the sea of boiling flesh below. The melting pot, once comforting, grew stale. The globules scattered bonds were shattered, so the graveyard undulated fiendishly. For something in their treasured light was wrong. The pseudopod and mitochondria began to doubt and they'd ever get along. St. Tanner's dying words were heads on a sea that grew into the gift of a newfound skin. Bring thus the hateful of father's curse, I took you from this world, I'll bring you in. O helmsman, helmsman, of the age untold, the one to turn our crimson sun to gold. The world you knew was given recompense. Succeeded by eternal incident, innocence. The helmsman reigns as neither god nor king, but silent nurturer and sentinel. The ancient paths to global suicide, awful altar under watch of Kent Sile. The stars will blink to nothing one by one, and worlds pass our borders in the sky. The father helmsman's son is elsewhere born. From realms where flames are never meant to die. And we ask him if there is still regret within his 50 billion year old mind. I bet he'd smile sadly, shrug, and say, This bus ain't leaving nobody behind. O oh, helmsman, helmsman, of the age untold, the one who turned our crimson sun to gold. Look down upon this gentler place to live in, then try to say you'll never be forgiven. And that was the end of the Helmsman and Ballad. A long, long story about someone named Zach Kent. I'm not sure if there's a real person named that, but if there is, they aren't really the person who did this. A fictional character named Zach Kent who took over control of the sun and apparently caused the events that lead to SCP-001 when day breaks. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video. Comment down below and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!